Jesus, everybody said after me, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. I'm, in him, I'm in him, and he's in me. He's in me. I'm, a I'm a new creation in Christ, made in his image and likeness. In his image and I'm, expecting I'm expecting great things today, today. In, Christ, in Christ, I'm more than a conqueror. My mind is alert. My, mind is alert. My, heart is My heart is receptive. And I'm ready, and I'm ready to, be a doer of the word. to be a doer of the word. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. I like doing that. This morning we're talking about the camels are coming again. Part two. But I'm going to... I'm gonna, have you look at something just for a minute not not to read this whole thing right now but in your bulletin does everybody have a bulletin this morning there's a handout too and it's called why you should call yourself well every day and it's a bible principle matter of fact pam pastor pam was using a bible principle to pray over you during communion, speaking to our bodies to be healed. And that is, that is a powerful thing. And really, everything that we do in our lives is planting a seed. Everything grows by a seed. That's the way God made it to be. Everything grows by a seed. So if you call yourself healed, it might, hap might not happen right now instantly. But it's a seed and it will grow. If you don't dig it up, that seed is going to grow. And you're going to re receive everything that Jesus wants you to have. So we should call ourselves well. We should call ourselves healed. Body, be healed in Jesus' name. Let's all say that together. Body, be healed in Jesus' name. And if there's a part in your body that you need to speak to, hip, leg, arm, be healed in Jesus' name. That's, that's planting a seed. Now there's other ways to be healed. A lot of ways. God has given different people gifts that healing can come. Lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. It's like a gift. And sometimes miracles happen instantaneously. But a lot of times in our life, we need to plant seeds and let them grow. That's why your words are so important. Speak words of healing. Speak words of blessing. This is the life of a believer. Speak words of blessing. When you curse someone or you have uh, words with someone and call them ugly or whatever, sometimes we do that. I, nobody wants to admit that. You don't have to raise your hand. But I know what, I know what happens sometimes. But most of the time, our words should be blessing to other people, especially. Somebody say amen to that. If you have a Bible this morning, you can turn to Genesis. That's really close to the front. If you want some help with that. Genesis chapter 22. And we're talking about the camels are coming. And what we mean by that is sometimes our blessings seem to be far off but you have to believe what's already in the spirit realm it's it's been activated by God God Almighty to bless us to send blessing to us and so camels you know camels aren't really bringing your blessing but they are a symbol. They are a type of how God blesses us. He sends blessings. And sometimes there's somebody 
that is carrying a blessing to us. And so we're just using camels as an example here. But here, here's what it says in Genesis chapter 22, looking at verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn. This is God Almighty. I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done. See, Ab Abraham had been willing to sacrifice his son. That was a type of God who sacrificed his own son, Jesus, on the cross for our benefit. So Abraham was doing the very same thing back way back a couple thousand years ago. He was a type of what was going to happen in the future. And that would be that Jesus was coming to the earth. Because you have done this thing by faith and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. This is so powerful. This is an example that we are given in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, it's so, it's so cool to look at the Old Testament because it's filled with prophecy. Like Pastor Doug was talking about, forecast for life is a prophecy for your life. You're making a forecast, just like the weather forecast. You're you're predicting that something good is going to happen to me today. That's a forecast. So we're, we're given this great blessing that God is going to bless Abraham because of what his, his faith was put to, to the test and he was going to sacrifice his only begotten son. And the blessing keeps going if Isaac then, his son, if Isaac is also blessed. And so in Romans chapter 4, you don't have to turn there, but in Romans 4, God told Abraham that he was going to be the father of many nations. And in order to be the father of many nations, then he was going to have to have a son. And he had to put his faith out because he was already old, way too old to have children in the natural. But in the supernatural, anything can happen. And that's what Abraham was believing. Even though he had been blessed by God and God had forecast, he forecasted that Abraham would be the father of many nations. Well, in order to the, for Abraham to be the father of many nations, he had to have a son first. And his son had to have some children. Well, the, as the story goes, you can read about it in Genesis chapter 22, 23, and 24. Isaac was, he, he was becoming old. But Abraham would not permit him to marry any of the girls that was around his, his, his territory at that time because they weren't believers. They were, well, in those days, uh, a lot of people were worshiping idols instead of God Almighty. And so Abraham wanted to make sure that his son would marry someone who was believing in God the Father Almighty. And so he sent his servant out with 10 camels to look for, you know how that goes, in those days in the Old Testament, 
there were marriages, but they were arranged. The good, thank you for that. They were arranged. You didn't pick out your own girl. Uh, your father would pick the girl out for you and, and arrange the marry, marriage. So th this is what was happening. He sent out his servant who was in charge of all of his wealth. Abraham was a wealthy man. And so the servant went out and found a, a girl named Rebecca. And Rebecca, it, it, it's so cool that, that the camels came to Rebecca and she was asked to give the servant of Abraham a drink of water. And she did. But she did more than that. And this is very important in this story. He, she did more than that. She, she gave water to all the camels. Ten camels. Camels can drink 40 gallons of water in one sitting. So multi multiply that by 10. You got 400 gallons of water. Rebecca was feeding the camels. So sometimes when you are receiving a blessing from the Lord, you have a part to play. You're going to have to receive what the Lord is doing in your life. And sometimes, like we did this morning, we said that we are becoming, right now, we're becoming a doer of the Word of God. And that's so important for us to be doers. You can hear the Word of God, and, and uh, some people hear the Word of God, but it, ju it just goes in with one ear and out the other. But some people hear the word of God and they know it's God speaking to them specifically speaking. God's word is speaking to me. I know that. It's speaking to me. And God's word is speaking to you. And it's up to you to do something with it. You, We could read the, uh, the whole... Uh, thing that Jesus spoke he said that some people hear the word of God but they're not doers and those people are this is Matthew chapter 24 you can look at that later but some people hear the word of God they don't do the word of God so it's like they are building their house on the sand and when the storms come and the winds blow trouble comes to your life Great is the fall of your house. Because, why? Because you're not a doer of the word of God. But he said also, I, I call a man who does the word of God, hears the word of God and does it, I call him a wise man. Because when the storm comes and the winds blow on his house, it will not fall because it's on a solid rock. You're, I'm building my house, my life on a solid rock, which is the Lord Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Yes. And I'm a doer of the word. Yes. So like Rebecca, Rebecca, she was a doer. She wasn't just a, uh, you know, some people in life, and that I'm, I'm not speaking this about everybody in here, nobody in here will be like this, but some people are passive in their lives. They don't really do what they know they're supposed to do. The Word of God. And if you're passive, you might miss the camels coming. Everybody should say, my camels are coming. My camels are coming, my camels are coming which is camels you see, they are transporters of blessing. They, they transport from one place to another. They bring blessing. They bring information. They bring opportunity. And I, I like to uh, relate them to angels. Because angels are quick to do the word of God that is spoken. 
If the word of God is spoken, angels react. If you don't say anything about the Word of God, if you don't speak the Word of God into your life or into someone else's life, the angels don't have anything to do. They're unemployed. When you speak the Word, you put the angels to work. And sometimes they are the one who bring blessing. So camels are like very closely related to angels. You remember how when the wise men came to see the Lord Jesus when he, was when he was born? They came on camels. Everyone who transported anything in those days went by camel. Be because camels were tough. Even in the heat, even in the cold, camels can stand up and withstand the weather. Or you could say it, the circumstances. Angels don't care about the circumstances. All they care about is when they hear the word of God, like when you speak, body, be healed in the name of Jesus. Angels go to work. Now, I'll, I'll say this to you. We do not command angels. I know some, there are some people that talk about, some preachers I heard, that talk about you can command your angels. Angels do not belong to you. Angels belong to God the Father. They do what He says. And they do the word of God that is spoken. Body, be healed in the name of Jesus. Angels stand at attention, ready to bring your blessing. I call it manifestation. It's a manifestation that angels bring. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we are believing for healing. We're believing that God will bless us in our lives, whether it be your, your job or your, your work, whatever you do, you're believing God is going to multiply your blessing, whatever you put your hand to. And sometimes you're believing, this is called faith, you're believing what you can't see in the physical. Well, what you're believing for is something that God has already promised but you don't see it yet. Yes. I'm believing because God said, just like Abraham, he was believing. God said he was going to be the father of many nations, but he didn't see a son yet. But he was believing. So when his son did come, it was a manifestation of what Abraham was believing. A manifestation of what God had promised. Praise the Lord. Anybody with me this morning? Yes. Or are you gone home already? No. Praise the Lord. So Abraham, he, he spoke and he believed God, even though he could not see in the physical. But the camels were coming. It says that angels, let me go back to that for a minute. You don't have to turn there, but in Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength. Angels are big, and they're mighty and powerful. They don't care about circumstances. You'll receive your blessing when you speak the word of God, because angels are powerful. And they can go through any circumstance who excel in strength, who do God's word, heeding the voice of God's word. Who is the one who gives voice of, to God's word? It's you and me. We are the ones who give voice to God's word. And the angels go to work. So one thing that we need to do, and I want to go back to this. 
just so you know, angels are just like camels. They bring things. They bring blessings. Angels are uh, camels. Some of them are called dromedaries. Dromedaries have one hump. And a lot, of, a lot of people think that that's where they store 40 gallons of water. That's not where they store the water. On their hump is nothing but fat. Big hump of, of fat. That's why they can go across the desert for weeks even without he eating because of that hump. And I don't know why some camels have two humps. But if you read about camels, the camels with two humps, they're, they're estimate in the world that there are about a thousand camels with two humps in the world. But with the camels that are with one hump, I know this is really uh, important to you in your life about the camels. <laughs> I'm just giving you a little background here because camels are very interesting animals. And, and see, sometimes we have to be like a camel too. You don't have to cower back to every little circumstance. Every little circumstance that comes against you you need to stand strong, like a camel does. Just not fold up and like a $2 suitcase. No, no, we, we don't cave in just by any little thing. No, we are strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Say amen to that. We believe that. He gives us strength even when we are weak. Let the weak say, I am strong. So this is so, this is so cool. <laughs> Camels with two humps, back to them, they can't be domesticated. In other words, they're in the wild and they don't want anything to do with people. But actually, Camels, dromedaries, they like people. And they like to bring things to... I, I know people have stories about camels, but camels really do like people. The dromedaries do. And so they, they're happy to bring blessing to us. It's like the good angels and the bad angels. So like the camels with two hump, humps are like bad angels. The good angels, there's lots of them. And we all have an angel. Say amen to that. Amen. So, the thing that we have to remember that God has already given us blessing. In Ephesians chapter 1, you can write this down for later. You don't have to look it up. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So, our camels are, on, are already on the way. God has already blessed us. What we need to do is we need to re receive our camels, our blessings, our opportunities. Genesis 24 tells us that Isaac went out to meditate in the field. And that's a good thing for us to do too. Meditate on the Word of God. A lot of people want to speed read the Bible. It's not really meant for that. The Bible is meant to read it, think about it, think about it. That's meditating. Meditate on the Word of God until it becomes your own until you receive a revelation kind of knowledge of the promise that you're believing for. That's what meditate does. They actually, meditating the word of God brings the blessing, brings the 
thing that God has already put in the spirit realm, all the blessings he's already blessed us with in the spirit realm, the unseen spiritual realm, and we want to see the manifestation of our blessing in the physical. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. We want that. Sometimes you have to meditate on the word of God until you really believe it. A lot of our problem is sometimes we see a promise of God and we say, yes, I want that promise, but you don't really believe it's going to happen. So you have to sow some seed. Sow seed of the word of God until it grows in you and gets stronger and it starts flourishing and you see the manifestation. Don't give up on your seed. Believe that the seed is going to come to pass because that is what God told it to do. Jesus said his words we're like seeds. When you plant the word in your heart, it's going to come to pass. Man, the word of God. I love the word of God. Yes. It's going to work if you work it. Amen. So our camels are already here. God has already blessed us. But we have to believe for the manifestation. Some, some people like to think about healing in that uh, realm that way. Sometimes you're believing for healing and you say, body be healed in Jesus' name, but you don't see it yet. Well, the next time when you get up again, you can say, body be healed. You can say that again. Because you know that God has already blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And what you have to do is you have to bring what's already in the heavenly places into the physical. Thy word be done on earth as it already is in heaven. That sounds like a prayer that a lot of people pray, doesn't it? The Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done on my body like it already is in heavenly places. And the seed is going to work if you don't dig it up. See, how do you dig up the seed? You dig it up by saying words of doubt and unbelief. I believe my seed is going to come to pass. I believe I'm going to have the manifestation of my healing and you dig it up by saying, well, I don't think it worked this time. Maybe it won't work. I wonder why it doesn't work. You know what you just said? You just said it doesn't work. Never say that. You're digging up your seed. Praise the Lord. And the other thing that we have to do, we have to unpack our camels. And what does that mean? When the camel is here, you're going to have to be strong to receive what the camel is bringing. And you're going to receive just like in the Old Testament. Let me read this scripture to you. In the Old Testament, we were given prophecies that didn't come to pass right away. It was like a seed. Prophecy is like a seed. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, God speaking said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a new heart. That was a prophecy of what is going to happen when Jesus comes, you have the opportunity to unpack the camel or receive, take what's been already given to you. It's already been given to actually everyone on the earth has been given the opportunity to receive Jesus as Savior. 
to get a new heart. A new spirit. A brand new you. A new breed, like Pastor Doug was talking about. You would become a new breed. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. When you get born again, you're brand new. You should shake off everything was from your past. Somebody say amen to that. So the whole Old Testament is telling some things that are going to happen. More than a hundred things were foretold about Jesus and the Old Covenant, Old Testament. Before it came to pass. Before Jesus was born in the earth, there were hundreds of things told about the Messiah who was coming. The Messiah would be doing this. The Messiah would die for our sins. All that was foretold in the Old Testament. And this, this powerful scripture here in Ezekiel told us that in days to come after the Messiah comes people will have the opportunity to get a brand new heart man that's us we've got a brand new heart we are new creations in Christ Jesus and with that I want to just thank the Lord thank you Lord for everything you've done for us already thank you for your word we know it Lord God we know how to receive our manifestation we know how to do it it's just up to us now to do it and Father God we're thanking you so much for giving us this opportunity to see things happen in our life something good is going to happen in Jesus mighty name if you agree with that say amen